So I went to my mother and I asked her, explain to me what my great grandmother, what my ancestor told you about this area. So she told me, that means you don't go to a place just to go there. You go there with a purpose and do your prayers, your offerings. And once that's done, you leave. You leave it as you found it. This to the little Colorado River, it meets the greater Colorado River. And where they meet, because they're male and female, when they meet, life comes from there. All life. Once the journey is done here, then the spirits, they go back. And when I think of that, anything disturbing that, the restfulness, the quietness, the beauty, listening to the wind, the rivers, it hurts me deeply in my heart. This Escalade development would dig into the heart of our most sacred place and destroy forever these areas. Right? Well, first of all, we need to listen to the people. Uh, because when we talk about escalating our Indian projects out there, we need to involve the local people, the voice of the local people in the area, rather than allowing big corporations to make those decisions. We need to stop doing that. So yes, we need jobs, but let it be the jobs that will benefit the people and the communities and not create problems and, and, and all kinds of fights locally. The snowpack from Colorado, snowpack from Wyoming and Utah, all drains a huge multi-hundred thousand square mile area, and it all ends up here in Lake Powell. From here, it goes through the turbines. Glen Canyon Dam is a hydroelectric dam and flows down into the Grand Canyon. I'm Sinjin Eberly. I'm the communications director for the Intermountain West for American Rivers. My parents were traditional 1960s environmental hippies. They took us on lots of river trips as kids. I always enjoyed being outside and I always enjoyed thinking about how these places matter to people. Even as a kid, I always thought about those kinds of things. In 2015, American Rivers named the Colorado River and the Grand Canyon as the nation's most endangered river. Factor number one was the proposal to build what's called the Grand Canyon Escalade. The Escalade development is a proposed high-end resort on the rim of the Grand Canyon on Navajo land with a tramway that travels down to the river in the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Linking those two things together is a gondola that um, could carry up to 10,000 people per day down to that site. And that would be the main attraction that people would come from around the world uh, as a destiny resort, not unlike what's been developed in the western part of the Grand Canyon by the Wallapai tribe and the Grand Canyon Skywalk. And our questions come up with that is, okay, 10,000 people a day, where is that sewage gonna go? They haven't answered those questions. Where's the water gonna go? Even before human-caused climate change, this has been an arid region, and water is the limiting factor. 
So when you talk about putting thousands of water consumers in a very tightly clustered space, and you don't have a solution for obtaining water other than to pump scarce groundwater supplies that supply the springs in the Grand Canyon, then you've got a serious problem. Then they say, well, we'll drill wells. Here it's a thousand feet into the ground and those aquifers feed all the springs in the canyon. It's already being depleted. Lake Powell has an elevation where the lake is full. Right now, you can see with what's called the bathtub ring behind me, you can see about a 50-foot white stripe. Those are mineral deposits that have been left from the time when the lake was full, maybe in the 70s and 80s and 90s. Now, with the drought and with the use of the Colorado River, the lake level is much, much lower, and you can see the water that's not currently sitting in Lake Powell. The developers have had in Arizona particularly kind of free reign to, 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 to propose something and the water will follow. It's not okay to just go ahead and say, well, we'll throw money at it when we get to it. Uh, we've got to draw the line somewhere. The Grand Canyon is the place to draw the line. Say the Confluence is a group of families that live in this area, that have home site leases, traditional customary land users. And it's been a, a long fight, especially once it started in 2009, almost five years now. By 2012, the Save the Confluence issue was really starting to gain some momentum. And I just, I, it's amazing working with them because, I mean, they really are open to a lot of things. For example, me writing on their faces. I had on my face that the Grand Canyon is a sacred space that's protected as our ancestors did. On the reservation, the unemployment rate, you know, is over 50%. Poverty level is, I don't know how many times the national average, the teen suicide rate is six times the national average. What I really wanted to do was to reflect back to the community some of the beauty they have shared with me over the time that I've been here. I thought it would be cool to make an info shop rest stop. So I was just gonna fill the inside of this roadside stand with information regarding the confluence issue. And the next time he went out there, he told us that the words had been written over on our faces. And he told us he feels now the kind of oppression that we're feeling from the community that supports the Escalade. Those communities have an unemployment rate that's probably closer to 60%. I understand the desire for gainful employment, and that's certainly how they see the proposed development. It's part of what I call the uh, conversation or the dialogue with the community. I put something up, <laughs> they tag it, I come back, add my voice to the conversation, we're not against economic development. We are for economic development, but not in this most sacred space. We know they're in need, we know they're hurting, but we need to do this ourselves. My name is Elson Bennett, and uh, born and raised here on the Navajo Reservation. We live right outside the Grand Canyon in a little town called Tuba City. And I pastor a church, as well as involved in the local government. I think the, the Escalade is not, not the answer to the people. If the Escalade came, yes, it can probably produce jobs. But we have to, as Navajo people, have to learn how to make things happen for ourselves. 
I have to educate my people first. And I got to educate them, first of all, about business. The American view is all about money. You're going back to the early 1900s of our grandparents. They had no concept of money. They had no concept of what it was. And so now, what do we do? Do we stay with our traditional ways? Or do we adapt to the American way? Well, we can't stop the American way. It's impossible. We have to build this bridge that nobody has crossed before. Kind of the old school of economic development on the reservation is, is not new, it's colonialism. Outside investors see something that they want to take and they'll offer a few jobs to the people who live out there and once they're gone, all, all the money is gone and most of the profits, all the profits go elsewhere. And that's exactly the kind of economic model that the Confluence developers were presenting. Did you see any bank here in uh, Gap and Bodaway area? There's no banks. I gotta go to Flagstaff to cash the check. Now, I need food at home. Since there's no grocery store here, I gotta buy from Flag. That means uh, I pay tax there. There's no car dealership, so I gotta buy their cars, my clothes, whatever I need to repair my home. It has to be from Flagstaff. None of that money stayed on the reservation. This uh, bead stand is owned by a young couple that choose to live on the reservation and take care of their family. Nearly a billion dollars a year comes into this region just for the Grand Canyon alone. And most of that is concentrated in Grand Canyon Village and in the surrounding gateway communities, the Flagstaff and Williams, Las Vegas. Very little of those revenues come through the reservation. That's a big discrepancy that uh, the developers are trying to take advantage of. But at the same time, if it's not the Escalade, then how do we do it? What else? We can't just say no to everything. No will get us in trouble. My fear is not the business people coming in. My fear is the people. Will they stand up and will they learn? Are they willing to change into where they take charge and ownership of the land that they say that belongs to them? Today's Father's Day, right? Mm. Our break time, our snack time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need to see it. I'll put it down. Um, maybe about 40, 45 years ago. We stopped over here at the end of lunch break again, and then we keep going down there. My mom just had the hook on down there. My grandmother hook on down there. We live here and there a lot that time. This is the hook on, but I don't know, I don't know what happened. I think it's the cattle that turn it down. This one right here, and to, to the dishes or something like that, stand for the dishes and put the dishes in there. That is my grandma and my aunt, they left here. These things, these would be the dishes. The fire. This one. And then this one. Ooh! <laughs> this lizard. I bet. I don't want to come over here. It's kind of sad. Remember things. I wish I wish they live. I wish they live in like that forever. Sometimes I wish. Uh, Sometimes I just clean up over here and they living over here again. That's what they. That's what they. That's what I'm thinking. Before I get another twenty years, 
after 20 years, I can't build nothing. I'm not stronger no more. Early when she's talking about her family's house, clean it up, maybe live out here. So she doesn't have to drive out here every day to the check on her cattle. There is a history behind all these places. And we want people to know we lived here, we are here, that we want to move back to these areas. If that road comes through to the Escalade, our families are gonna be at a disadvantage. If they wanted to build a bread and breakfast and take advantage of the tourist industry, they wouldn't be able to because everything has to be approved by the Escalade. We just don't want the rope here. They told us they had to give us some money. I don't believe it. I know we need the money or something, but the money only one day and then gone. When that's why we need the, the lamb. We use it a lot. That's what we do. Grand Canyon Trust is a regional conservation group that was founded in 1985. So our mission is to protect and preserve the Grand Canyon and surrounding canyons of the Colorado Plateau and its great biodiversity and cultural diversity. The threat that trumps all other threats here was climate change, and that is fast upon us. The potential for life on this place on the planet is severely diminished due to lack of water or too much water when it comes in huge deluges. We have a thing called female rain and male rain. Female melt rain is a gentle rain that used to be prevalent. Now it's mostly, mostly male rain. It diluges the land, it doesn't really seep in, and it just, just cuts out the washes. I only spoke Navajo as a child, um, but I just knew a lot. I mean, it was common sense to know the land, to know the stories, to know uh, things like how to herd sheep. I come from a, a grandmother that had over a thousand sheep, and we moved the sheep around. We didn't never lived in one place. There's a whole layer of Western land title systems and grazing permit systems that have been overlaid. Very few families can move their sheep around like I did, you know? So very few families can let the land rest. You've got less rain, you've got hotter temperatures, now you're overgrazing, so you're creating a desert. All across the res, you're starting to see a desert. We're really seeing a landscape scale transformation of this region, and it's accelerating. The entire Southwest has been one of the fastest growing regions in the country. So that puts us into this position where we have much more population that we have to support. Then you layer on the fact that since 2000, the Southwest has been in the most extreme, the longest lasting drought that's been recorded in a thousand years. Those factors combined put this area into a deficit. This is a region that was developed around cheap coal. You know, in order to make the desert bloom, we're, we're, we're cooking the planet. We're in effect making it hotter and drier, and requiring yet more energy to keep the desert wet enough uh, to be survivable. Making municipalities more efficient, making agriculture more efficient, and using more renewable energies can actually lead to a surplus in this river basin. And at this point in the health of the basin, we need to start thinking about all of these things. We really need to look holistically at the environment, at the culture, at the economy in ways that make as much sense as possible. 
That's a great challenge, but um, the good news is uh, when faced with great challenges, small groups of people stand up and make a difference. Uh, one that is put there, right? Well, first of all, we need to listen to the people. Uh, because when we talk about Escalade or any projects out there, we need to involve the local people, the voice of the local people in the area. Ben Chelly's out. He's, he's been long overdue to be out. And we have the support of the now Haitian president. So grateful that somebody listened. A leader can listen to his people. The families that live out there, the Save the Confluence families, uh, Renee, Erlene, organized to stop this thing in its tracks within the Navajo Nation. The project is not going away. The developers have signaled they're looking for more money. They're, they're out there lobbying on a daily basis. And we'll see how deep their pockets are because they've got a long road ahead. For my family, those that have come before me, and then also for those who are to come, our next generations, my grandchildren, their children. I would like to have them see it the way it is now, on and on, forever.